beautiful Libra friends and welcome to your horoscope for 2021. Where Libra this year, I feel like you say what you need to say is the theme I kind of feel like is happening for you from the fact that we've got the Saturn and Uranus squares happening three different times this year, um, squaring up your fifth and your eighth houses of expression and those things that are down deep that we need to talk about, but also the fact that we've got the eclipse seasons happening between your third house and your ninth house. So this is very much so a say what you need to say kind of year, new thinking, new beliefs, new ideas. There's some course corrections in here as well this year to relook at your thinking or your communication as it um, relates to you relating to other people and having a little bit of harmony in your life. Now, I'm going to tell you out the gate, I don't think that 2021 is anything like 2020 was because the fall, the crash, the thing needed to happen. Now in 2021, we figure out what to do with it, live in the new norm. And that doesn't mean that it's easy. The squares that we have are happening between fixed energies this year, so it can be very stubborn. So there is some work to be done, but it, it it's not just like, let's suffer through 2021. That's not the story at all. Jupiter is comfortable this year as he dips into the energy of Pisces. He's in a ruling planet, so he almost starts to act like a guardian angel in this position and it's very fortunate the energy flows a lot more easily and this will be around your daily routines so I think this is actually going to be quite quite helpful for you but I don't want you to come into 2021 with any delusions about um keeping your peace and keeping your tongue. This may very much so be a year where your ideas need to come out. Of course, we want to send those out in the best receivable ways possible, but this could definitely be a year where especially these squares send you in the direction where it's like, hey, that doesn't work for me anymore, or hey, this is what I think, even if it's the most beautiful, friendly thing ever. Libra, I think you're coming out a little bit this year for sure. Now let's get in here and talk about these dates. Now at the beginning of the year, we see Mars coming out of the energy of Aries. So just across the street, but we're rocking and rolling that seventh house for a very long time. And as Mars was in that retrograde in 2020, it was very close to the earth. So the intensity around relationships, I think was something that you definitely had the ability to experience. And whatever was created, whatever strategy, whatever adjustment that came from Mars being in that position in the seventh house. Now, as Mars moves into the energy of Taurus, first of all, we get a deep breath because a planet has changed signs. So that gives us a little bit of a deep breath, which is like, Woosa, you know what I mean? So as he moves into this eighth house, the things that you learned about the adjustments, adjustments to strategy, your desires in relationships even, you get to apply those with depth now. Build security. Physically build some kind of security with them with Mars here in Taurus. Now, if some of the things that you have been looking at are being more independent with your money, things like paying down debt or, you know, taking action to collaborate or to heal or to teach or something like that. I think that this Mars in Taurus definitely helps you to be able to do that. But trust me, just the fact that it is not in your seventh house anymore, you may be popping the everything to celebrate that in and of itself. Now, it also remember Mars in Taurus, what you learned, what you brought forward you need the time and the slow pace of Mars in Taurus to learn to move your feet this way. That's why we actually celebrate the fact that Mars is moving into Taurus, even though traditionally it's known to be in fall. So here, celebrate that this pace is not very fast, but it's going to dig deep, hunker down, and make something really solid and steady for you in this particular area of the eighth house. Joint resources, healing, transformation, sex, the reproductive system, astrology, collaborations, anything you're connected to in a joint way, you're going to be able to see a little bit of motion happening in that particular um, area. Now, Mercury is going to retrograde three different times this year. And instead of doing it in the water energies like it's done in the last two years, we're going to have three different retrogrades this year, all in air energy. So in your fellows. So we're going to start the first retrograde um, in January, January 30th. The next one will be May 29th. And the last one will be September 26th in Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. So as you are experiencing these this year, I think that these are retrogrades that actually feel even a little bit more comfortable to you because they ask you to go back over your thinking, evaluate your thinking, reconnect, re-edit, reunion, re-invite, re-engage, reassess your ideas in these particular areas, your fifth house, your ninth house, and the ideas about you. So I'll talk to you a lot more about those in the months that those are happening, okay? 
Now we've got the Saturn Uranus square, and this is the big cheese that's happening for the year. You're going to hear tons of astrologers talking about it because it's a big deal. It's a big deal globally, but it's also a very big deal personally when we bring that down to size because both of these planets really want to push us and change us and reshape us so that we are fit for our duties out in the world and with the other people on this planet. So as Saturn and Uranus are squaring, they are squaring in Aquarius and Taurus. Now these are both fixed energies. So this is gonna be a stubborn square. Both sides are like, oh, you can pry it out of my cold dead hands. You know, a fixed energy is ground in there. So it's going to be this clash of the titans that happens. And think about this in your chart and in your world and in your experience. Where do you feel like as these, as these energies clash together that you're feeling it? Like something is tugging at something that is fundamentally kind of stubborn for you between your fifth house and your eighth house. So this is the house of self-expression joy, play, my art, my me taking a risk, who I am, my play, my own special thing that I'm doing on this planet. And that is squaring your eighth house of intimacy, fear, my depth. And sometimes the, the thing we fear the most is how magical we actually are. You know, so these two are going to be coming into clash with one another. And this may be one of the indicators we have straight at the beginning of the year. The Libra needs to say what they need to say. What do you need to say? What needs to be said out there? And it doesn't have to be negative. I can't stress that enough. Do you have something to tell us? Do you have a perspective to share with us? Is there something that... Um you know, was there a trauma or a drama or a fear or something from your depths that now you're ready to bring that out? Now, I also think of the fifth house being of children um, and childlike energies as well. So this could be, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if you're not learning things about, potentially learning things about children in your life, right? Having some kind of revelation as these energies come up. But either way, it's just looking to shake the rut out. Now, what I can tell you about Saturn and Uranus that I highly suggest is do not push and do not resist against what's going on. Go to the fear, go to the uncomfortable, go to the excitement, go there and stay open and um, flexible to the best of your ability. Try not to be so fixed because it's already gonna be a heavy fixed energy. So try not to be so fixed, adapt and change, be welcome to innovative ideas to say what you need to say, Libra. Now, when we see those happening will be February, June 14th and, Ju and December 24th, okay? May 13th, we're going to welcome Jupiter for a dip into the energy of Pisces. Before that, he's spending most of the time traveling through the energy of Aquarius. And after July, he'll spend a long time through Aquarius as well until December. But between May and July, we're going to see Jupiter take this jump into the energy of Pisces. Now, in traditional astrology, he is the traditional ruler of Pisces, so very comfortable here. And this is why I say in his comfort and in the flow, he gets to act and serve and encourage this guardian angel energy for you, which is playful. Jupiter's a benefic, right? So he's also bringing an expansion here. In the energy of Pisces, this lights up your sixth house space, so daily routines, your health, your wellness, um, the way that you're of service to other people. Um, you know, is your daily routine um, joyful? Do you feel like your daily routine is beneficial to you? Or even, I would think too, that in, in its own way, I feel like Jupiter being here in Pisces, having had this energy in Aquarius, I'm just watching this move, you guys, and it's, it's almost like you bring your, your joy into a space of daily maturity or practice. You bring that joy that you've been breaking out and doing and trying to move with your own thing into a daily practice or you're bringing it into service of other people. So I'm wondering if Jupiter's even giving you an expansive project that becomes available to you where you're really able to be that benefit to other people. Maybe you're someone's secret angel this year. That would be an incredible experience. But I will tell you, in the sixth house here and in Comfortable in Pisces, where there are no bounds for either Jupiter or Pisces, right? Make sure you don't take on too much. Allocate your resources. Do you have the time? Do you have the energy? Do you have the finances to involve whatever you're taking on in your daily routine? Um, so you don't take on too, too much that you can't actually do something brilliant with it or you end up overwhelmed and avoiding and procrastinating on the things that you did take on, okay? 
May 26th is going to roll us into the eclipse season and we're going to start off on May 26th with a lunar eclipse at uh, five degrees of Sagittarius here. So the third house. Now we're going to pick back up December 4th with a solar eclipse at 12 degrees of Sagittarius. So these are both going to work that third house space. So here we're going to relook at how you communicate. Are you writing? Are you teaching? Are you studying something? Things with siblings could certainly be on the adjustment for the next six months. Now one of them is going to bring a sense of endings the other in December is going to bring a sense of new beginnings and now sometimes those lines blur you know it seems like one is ending and one is starting and which one is which but either way it will be a course correction and it will also be an area that I think because Jupiter is the ruling planet of Sagittarius so what Jupiter is doing in in the skies is also going to have an influence on this eclipse as well so this could also be the area where you are expanding so truly we could see you studying something we could see you teaching something and that is your area of expansion or communicating third house getting new ideas and they're ready to start coming out in some way shape or form and so six months at a time you'll get the opportunity to make those adjustments june 10th we've got a um, solar eclipse happening at 19 degrees of gemini now this is in your ninth house right up tip top publishing marketing broadcasting expansive thinking faith bigger thoughts, bigger ideas, law lives here as well. But I think about the fact that um, at this particular time, we're also going to have that we have the eclipse, we're also going to have Mercury retrograde in Gemini as well. So are you going, are you going back to something that you you're like traveling back to it and as you travel back to it this course correction that's kind of happening with that mercury retrograde and then with the eclipse puts you in the position to truly say ah i can pull this out of hiding and expand it out right so it'll definitely be i think a year to pay attention in the eclipse season for what you're thinking the rearrangement of your thoughts the rearrangement of how you're sharing your thoughts and you're communicating for many people too this will be a new brand of faith. This will be a new um, set of thoughts and ideas and communication about your ethics and your values. And that doesn't seem like a big deal, but personally, if you don't know or you haven't updated your mission statement for why you get out of bed in the morning, this might be a wonderful time to do that. And as the world is reshaping itself here, Libra, this will be a really brilliant time for you as well to say, well, what do I believe about that? Now, when we get to November 19th, we're going to have a lunar eclipse at 27 degrees of Taurus. This is going to light up that um, eighth house energy, okay? Now, this is kind of the, um, like, the one-off, you know? Everything else is in Sagittarius and Gemini, and then we've got this vulnerable eighth house happening over here with Taurus energy. But one of the things I think happens at this particular eclipse is the eighth house speaks to... Um, a detox, a letting go, a transforming or a rebirth of something. And the energy of Taurus, the thing I think of as things you're holding on to, right? We're grounding down into these things. So in your eighth house and we come to this lunar eclipse, is there something that it's just time to let that go? It's time to over that next six months detox this area of your life. Allow yourself to open and to be vulnerable in Taurus too, just physically in your in your body but also Taurus of the throat is there a detox of your words that needs to happen in this particular time frame for you now the other side of that um because so much was happening with relationships for you in 2020 this could deepen because Taurus wants depth and wants long-term and wants stability, right? So in your eighth house, are you creating new depth with your relationships? Is there, um, you know, are there new people? <laughs> Is your body changing? Are you having a baby? Is your body changing in, a, in another way? Or maybe you find out your body can or cannot do something this year and you're needing to rebalance and find value, Venus, Taurus energy in that area as well. So whatever's happening in this eighth house energy, by the time we get to this lunar eclipse, Taurus is trying to make it solid, but the lunar portion is also trying to tidy up on the inside for you. So it's actually very vulnerable, but very helpful. When we get to December 4th, that's going to be that Sagittarian eclipse at 12 degrees. So again, they're in the third house of communication. You're going to adjust and make adjustments to whatever you learned up there in May. And these things, I think, have a lot to do with your success for the year, what you think and what you're saying. On December 19th, we're going to see Venus taking a retrograde in the energy of Capricorn into 2022, so six weeks. Now, Venus retrograde in the energy of Capricorn is the value of how I'm achieving something. 
the value of maturing in some way, right? The value of how I'm managing my resources or things like that. So this is going to be in your fourth house space, Libra. So I think you are going back over home, family, real estate, property and saying, what's my value here? What's my role? What am I doing? Do I do I value this house? Do I value my physical house? Or does this is this a place that I feel like I can't achieve? You know, do you need to like maybe reshape or rebalance things in your house? Do you feel like there's too many things that you can't actually manage it, manage and navigate your space to be able to be successful? Do you not have the right equipment you need to be successful and achieve in this area of your life? But certainly under the energy of Venus, it's finances it's romances, and it's the things that are looking for harmony. Venus is a benefic. So as she's going backwards with tour guide Capricorn to take her, she is looking to create a benefit that you can achieve with as you come, as Venus comes forward here in 2022. So look for some rearrangements to the home zone area for you for sure. And that includes your internal security and psychological foundation. You've been speaking, you've been learning this year, sharing new ideas, bringing new concepts in, having a new faith. That'll certainly change how secure you feel in here, okay? As we close out the year on December 29th, we see Jupiter moving back into Pisces for the energy to stay there, to do his tour through the Piscean lands, okay? So you'll have Jupiter acting as this very comfortable tour guide and guardian angel for you in that sixth house area. Again, I remind you, heading into 2022, regardless of what you see, whatever you go through this year, be mindful of your resources and your time because you may take on too much but this could also help you dig and, and so deep, like have a dive into the creativity of possibility of imagining your future, of imagining things into your projects and your work that you just couldn't see before. So I think that this will be a beautiful placement to end this year on. All right, Libras, I think it's going to be an intriguing year. I really do. We've got some new norms to breathe in all over the world. We've got them. So it'll be interesting to see what you do with them. And it'll be interesting to say what Libra has to say this year. All right, you guys like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you here on YouTube, on Patreon, on the podcast, in the weeklies, in the monthlies. I'll just see you where I can see you. And I look most forward to it. All right, Libras, I love you. Bye.